Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham, and welcome to my show. And today we're going to be speaking with Matthew, who just purchased his first house. And then immediately after that, he ended up losing his job. So we're going to be bringing him on the show, and he wants to know how he could best navigate the situation so that he does not lose his home to foreclosure. So anyway, let's bring him on the show and see what's going on. So Matthew, welcome to The Graham Stephan Show. What's going on? Oh, not much. Good to be here. Definitely. So, uh, So what's up? So, um, last week on, let's say, I think Tuesday, I uh, signed my closing papers. Wednesday, I got my keys to my my first house. Uh, And on Wednesday, I got economically laid off because of uh, this damn uh, word, the thing we can't say, otherwise you get demonetized. We can't say that Uh, word, otherwise I will lose my job too. (laughs) And YouTube, uh, yeah, we'll shut down the video very quickly. I'm so sorry to hear about that. Ah, it's all good. Uh, we're, we're chugging along for now. Um, so, yeah, the reason that I reached out is because I was curious to know if I should try and reach out to my bank and let them know that I've lost, not lost, but I am temporarily uh, laid off because of the um, yeah. the thing uh, and see if I can get my uh, my mortgage pushed out about 50 days like uh, like the standard thing that I've heard for uh, for my area. Gotcha. Well, let me ask you this. What, how much savings do you have right now for something like this? Do you have the reserves? So, no, I don't, unfortunately. I, uh, I graduated last May from college with my, my, ba- my basic bachelor, uh, and I, I just did my four years, and I got out. I was working for, uh, for a company for three months. I got a better offer, so I was with this next company for seven months. And uh, I, I put I, any money that I had saved up going forward was put towards my down payment. Mm-hmm. So essentially, no, I, I don't have that uh, that goal of three to six months of uh, expenses saved up. I've got I've, I can cover two months very easily. Um, currently, my federal lo- student loans are in uh, forbearance, so the interest is not accruing. And I believe that the payments have also been temporarily paused due to the bad thing going on in the world. Yes. So I got that going for me. So I think if my mortgage doesn't also get suspended or delayed, I should be good. However, the also, the other saving grace that I have is that my first payment's not supposed to be due until May 16th anyway. Right. So I do have time there. Are you looking for other work right now or what's the status right now of your employment? I am yes. Um, I as, when I went in to collect my belongings, they did say that they obviously that's not the place that anybody wants to be, um, but they would certainly look to to take us all back on because it's better than having to train a bunch of new people. Um, yeah, but, I agree. Yeah, of course, I I am looking for 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 work. Right. What industry are you in? Out of curiosity. Um. It's really hard to like say because honestly, not even I know. I just I'm a, I'm a coordinator for a contracting company who supplies electricians for lighting purposes of retail stores. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, my number one uh, piece of advice would be more than anything, just look for employment. Whatever it is right now, even if it's short term, even if it's just for a few months, any money you make right now is going to be so valuable in the long term, especially right now with prices as low as they are right now. Like any money that you could make could be worth significantly more in the future. So. Definitely. That would be my first piece of advice, no matter what it is. Obviously, stay safe. You know, you never want to put yourself yeah. at risk or anything like that. But but safety aside, you got that covered. Then, uh, you know, employment would be next. Now, I, I, you know, you are right in that, you know, your payment is going to be delayed until May. But if you're concerned about it, what I would do is at least start the dialogue in another you know week or so with your lender and see if there's a payment yep. plan or something that you could get on at least for like you mentioned another you know one to two months. I think a lot of times lenders are willing to work with the borrowers. They definitely don't want to default, especially if they just closed on a loan. So yeah, if it were me, I would call them up and see what you can do with them. Uh, there are some programs out there where they will basically just defer your payment or tack it on to the end of the loan. Um, others out there will basically say, you know, you won't owe us, but then you'll have this gigantic lump sum with interest due at like five months, which doesn't really help anybody. So I would work it out with them and see what sort of resolution you could come up with with them. 
Okay, awesome. Thank you. I was afraid that I would like call them up and tell them about the uh, economical layoff and it spook them, and they'd like try and somehow revoke my mortgage. No, oh no, they can't do that. Once once they sign out, they're on the hook. You know, oh, that's good. Oh yeah. So yeah. All so right, they cool. can't. So together. Yes, and here's here's the thing too. I mean, the foreclosure process is is very long and drawn out. I mean, it's not like you're going to miss a payment and then like the next month you're going to be on the streets. So it doesn't right. work like that. If you miss a payment, you know, your biggest thing right now, you, you don't want to mess up your credit score, um, exactly, and you yeah. don't want to lose the house at the same time. So it's it's you know, if you miss a payment more than thirty days, usually that's when it's reported to the credit bureaus and you take a hit on your score. Uh, but the but the actual foreclosure process is very long, and that's and that's a lender's last case resort. Like lenders really do not want to foreclose on properties. It's expensive. It's time consuming. They're not in the business of going and taking uh, ownership of real estate and then trying to resell it. They really want to give you as many chances as possible to pay. Um, even with a lot of the short sales, I remember in like 2009, 10, 11, if, if a homeowner was missing their payments, I mean, they would say like, hey, here's their last chance. Here's a chance. You want to pay us? Here's the amount. So it's going to be a long process. So it's not like you're going to be out in the streets, but uh, it would be nice to have the peace of mind just to know that your credit's going to be intact, that you could save the extra money while you really need it right now, and then continue making payments once you're employed again. Sweet. All right. That's yeah. awesome to hear. And Thank you very much. Of course. And let me ask you, um, I mean, what was the reason that you ended up buying this house without having the three to six month emergency fund? Uh, just because I had graduated college and I didn't get the job that I that I thought I was going to get out of state. And uh, so I, I, I went back home to live with my parents. And well, that's not what anybody wants. And my family's an absolute nightmare. Hmm. So I had to get out. And then the, uh, but the house that I, that I'm in right now, it's just, it's an excellent spot. And it's something that I could comfortably afford with, uh, with what I was making, uh, still had money on the, on the back end to afford all sorts of luxuries in life and, uh, do my regular amount of investing that I do every month. My right. side hustle, uh, also provides a good amount of money, but of course being a side hustle, it, it can be inconsistent. So Definitely. there's that. Definitely. I mean, this is a reminder of, of the three to six month emergency fund. And I mean, I don't know your living situation with your parents or how unbearable that was, but uh, it's a good way to save money, though. But uh, yeah, yeah sure. generally speaking, I mean, this is something you would want the three to six month emergency fund for. Um, and anything short term like this, too, until you have that, sometimes it's even better just to rent. Um, I'm not sure what the rental prices would be or if it would be very similar to what your mortgage would be anyway. Uh, but at least you would still have that down payment. Um, let me. Yeah, no, you're absolutely uh, right. Let me ask you this: Do you have any extra bedrooms or anything you could rent out within your house? Yeah, yeah, I have someone moving in next week. Actually, there we go. See, that's yeah, a so start. He'll, he'll, he'll be paying my mortgage. Okay. Oh, good. So, worst case, it seems like you're going to be okay if, in the event, the bank says, "Sorry, we're not doing anything." In the event. It's probably not yeah. going to happen, but okay. So you'll have income coming in from that. You you have enough for what? What did you say? One to two months of payments. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So it sounds like you're you're in a decent position. Should anything happen, at least you got the next few months covered. Yeah, for sure. So I'm I'm okay with that. But yeah, definitely good idea to rent out the bedrooms. And then anything else you could figure, like any other little additional things you could rent out. You know, sleep on the couch, rent out the living room, rent out the kitchen. Hey, I'm, Start, I'm right now. Yeah. I'm I'm running out of parking space in the garage too. <laughs> see that's see that's the thing. This is these are the times where you start getting really creative. You figure out like what do people need? What can I rent out? And how much money can I make? Right. Yeah. Perfect. Well, do you have any other questions? Is there anything else you want to uh, go over? We got we got another few minutes here. Well, actually, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. So uh, that that side hustle that I, that I was mentioning. Um, it's an anesthesia business, and so what we do is uh, bring certified, board-certified anesthesiologists to independent doctors' offices, um, so that they can. Pr pr uh, sorry, we bring board-certified anesthesiologists into doctors' offices so they can provide individual surgeries as opposed to outsourcing to bigger hospitals with that, with those resources. Um, however, we're having a billing issue, and we can't come to terms with, uh, you know, the bigger name brand insurance companies. Do you have any advice on that, on how to settle with them? 
Gosh, that is so beyond my what I'm qualified to even talk about. I have no idea. Even even dealing with my own insurance company, which is Kaiser, has been just a pain. It's been horrible dealing with insurance companies. I I, I sympathize with what you're going through right now. All right. Cool. But, well, thank but you very how, much. Yeah, of course. But how about this? If anyone in the comments section has any advice for this or has any knowledge in that field, uh, feel free to comment down below and let us know. But yeah, I, I just don't want to give any advice or any indication that I know what I'm talking about with something that I don't. So I'll just be upfront with you. Unfortunately, that's not something that, that I can help with. But no, I wish you the good. best of luck on that. No, I, I, I appreciate you reaching out to the audience and asking them the comment in the section below. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to watch this video and smash the like button, man. Everyone I'm needs excited. to smash the like button. And you know what everyone else needs to do? They need to uh, get their two free stocks from Weeble. Have you done that yet? I have, yeah. I got I got Weeble. You know, that's another question I should ask <laughs> yeah. you. You don't, uh, I mean, I know it's only like a one stock, so it's kind of like loosey-goosey. But like, do you, do you uh, are you signed up for like the Moomoo app or Doe or what's the, what's the third one? The uh, first, first trade. You know what? So I have a free stock every time you sign up as well. Really, I have not heard of any of those. I I need more things to promote yeah. now. Oh wow, what is this? Yeah, so first trade, they actually gave me a share of Facebook, and wow. so you know, three or five months ago, I was pretty excited because that that came in at that two hundred bucks. Jeez, first trade. All right, I'll check that out. I have not used yep. them yet. Nice. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll email you back with with those uh, with those things. <laughs> Deal. Let's do it. And uh, if you guys check the description and you want your free stock from from uh, what what is it called again? Uh, First trade. There's Doe. I... Yeah. First trade Doe and Moo Moo. Okay, I'm going to try these out, and if you see a link down below in the description for your free stock, uh, that means I actually did this, I signed up, and I liked it. If you don't see it, that means either I didn't like it or uh, or I haven't done this yet. So just a heads up there. I love it. All right, well, cool. cool. Thank Perfect. you very much for your time, Graham. Yeah, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and uh, good luck. Keep us posted. Thank you very much. Have a cool. good day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, if you guys have not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram. I post there pretty much daily. So if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there. And like I mentioned, if you guys want your two free stocks, use that link down below in the description and Weeble is going to be giving you two free stocks when you sign up on their platform. And one of the stocks could be valued up to $1,400. So use the link down below in the description, get your two free stocks. Let me know which two free stocks you get. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time.